this is very important from a exam perspective you've learned see now we are talking about the coefficient of determination in a way this builds on see the see gives some indication of how certain we can be about a particular prediction of y using the regression equation but SEE still does not tell us how well the independent variable explains variation in the dependent variable. So it tells us something, but it doesn't tell us quite enough. So we need something more. That something more is the coefficient of determination. This measures the fraction of total variation in the dependent variable that is explained by the independent variable. Total variation is equal to unexplained variation plus explained variation. Now, what does this mean? Okay, I'll give you a picture that is not 100% precise, but will give you a sense for what we are talking about. X is our independent variable, Y is the dependent variable. Let's say that you have a data set that looks like this. So, this is your scatter plot. You then have your regression guy run a regression and there is a line that is produced. This is your regression model. Okay, now what do we mean by this thing called explained variation and unexplained variation? If you look at these various y values, there will be a certain average value of y. So all these y values, if you just take out the average of these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers, there will be a certain average value denoted by y hat. All right. And then based on your regression model, let's say that this value of x is 10. If your x value is 10, what is the number for y which is predicted by the model? That is this thing here, right? So if you tell the model that, look, x or the independent variable is 10, then the model will tell you that the dependent variable is this number. And let me just give some numbers to explain. Let's say that this number is 70, just picking random numbers here. So the model is saying that if x is 10, then y is 70. Let us also just say that based on these various y numbers, the average value of y is 50. Again, picking numbers to illustrate a concept. All right. When we talk about total variation, the total variation refers to the difference between the actual value of y and the average value. Let's say that the actual value of y is 75. So the total variation is this distance. It's the distance between the actual value of y and the average value of y. Now that total variation has two components. One part is this which is explained by the regression. That's called the explained variation. Why is it called explained? Because it is explained by the regression. And then there is a part which is not explained. Okay, so so there is explained variation and that which is not explained is called the unexplained variation. Now there will be some squaring issues and other issues but conceptually this is what we mean by explained variation, unexplained variation and total variation. Now in a good regression, what do you think R squared should be? Should it be high or low? Given that R squared is explained variation divided by total variation. So a high R squared is good because a high R squared is saying that most of your variation is explained. Explained variation based on, you know, the formula is simply this or mathematically you can also write this as 1 minus unexplained variation over total variation. So all these are just simple terms. Okay. Now, a few other testable points that I want to cover. In this particular reading, we only use one independent variable. When that is the case, when you only have one independent variable, then the R squared 
so this by the way this coefficient of determination is the r squared so it is sometimes written like this sometimes it's called the coefficient of determination sometimes it's written like this okay so with only one independent variable r squared is the square of the correlation so with one independent variable you just have x and a y so the r squared is simply the correlation number which is r and square but this is not the case when you have more than one x which is what will happen later so that is why when you have more than one x then you need to use this method this method works with only one x or multiple x this is the more rigorous method another term that you need to learn here is multiple r the correlation this r is also called multiple r now i know this is annoying but i'm doing this with you because i see questions where this material they test you on basic terminology like this and those who don't like all the complicated formulas at least nail these questions okay so all the points i made over here are important make sure that in your fact and formula sheet you note this down all right now let me quickly test how well you are following this you have uh, two possible scenarios low r squared high s w e and high r squared low s w e which one is better Sorry. clearly high r squared and low s w e now what i want you to do before i do this is in your notebooks just with x and y and x and y just draw out a scatter plot that reflects this situation and then a scatter plot which reflects this situation so here is what you should be coming up with a low r squared and a high s w e is a bad thing so you might have a situation like like this over here where you have a regression line which doesn't do a great job of explaining the actual data and a uh, high r squared low s w e this is a good thing so here we are saying that we might have a regression line which does a good job of explaining the data now here is another exam type question let's say that you have a situation like this where you have data like that okay so some data that is aligned so and then the regression equation gives you something like that then you realize that this actually was an accident and you then from your data set remove this what will be the impact on r squared will the r squared increase or decrease increase the r squared will then increase what will be the impact on s w e this will decrease now these are the sorts of questions you are more likely to get on the exam because they are testing whether you really understand what those terms mean